Hello everyone, this is teacher Maria Cristina Mariola, your today's facilitator. What we have for today is about the random variables and it's two types. The first one is about the discrete variable and then the second one is about the continuous variable. So just sit down and relax and enjoy learning. What are the objectives of today's lessons or the most essential learning competencies in focus? Number one, illustrate a random variable. Number two, distinguish between a discrete and a continuous random variable. And number three, find the possible use of a random variable. First one, what is a random variable? A random variable is a variable whose value depends on outcomes of a random event. This is the variable whose numerical value is a numerical outcome from a random event. So, it corresponds to the number of outcomes of the random experiment. For example, number one. The number of video lessons uploaded in my YouTube channel. Number two, the height of the most handsome student in my class. Number three, the weight of the sexiest lady I have in my class. Number four, the amount of cola in a bottle drink. And what else? Number five, the number of heads when a coin is tossed twice. Or uh, number six, what is the temperature in Tagaytay? These are examples of a random variable. It is just a numerical description of the outcome. Now, can you give an example of your own? Okay, very good class. Now that you have a clear idea of a random variable, the next thing to discuss is the two types of random variable. The first one is the discrete variable and the other one is the continuous variable. What is the difference between the two? From our six examples, which are discrete variables and which are continuous variables? How can we distinguish discrete? from continuous variable. What is the difference between the two? From our six examples, which are discrete variables and which are continuous variables? How can we distinguish discrete from continuous variable? Okay, let us proceed. What do we mean by discrete variable? It is a countable number of distinct values. Discrete are numbers that can be counted. Here, we assume a finite number. Values are obtained by counting. Examples Number 1. The number of heads in tossing the coin twice. Number 2. The number of students who have passed the first semester. Number three, the number of vaccinated in your city. Number four, the number of severe patients with COVID-19 in a certain hospital. Number five, the number of students who are actively participating in our class today. Meaning, we can visibly count the number of heads or tails in tossing a coin and we can count the number of students who have passed the first semester the number of persons who are vaccinated in your city and the last one is the number of students so these are called the discrete random variables these are an event or any situation or anything that can be counted The second one is the continuous variable. What is a continuous variable? How is this differ from discrete random variable? Well, continuous variable can be represented 
by any value within a specified range of interval and can take on an infinite number of possible values. Continuous are numbers that can be measured. So, meaning it is a measured number of distinct values. Continuous variables are numbers that can be measured. It is a measured data, yung sinusuka. Sa discrete naman, binibilang. Ano-ano nga bang examples na continuous variable? Yung mga sinusuka tulad halimbawa ng number one, distance. The distance from your residence to your school. Next, number two, the body temperature. Number three, the speed of the car. Number four, the amount of rainfall in the typhoon or death. So, yung mga examples natin, something that has measurable quantities. Okay, do you see now the difference between the two? The first one, yung discrete, has to be counted. The second one, continuous, is to be measured. So, now you are already have a clear idea of discrete random variable and continuous random variable. Now, let us explore further. Let us bring the concept of random variable in a problem solving. For example, in a sample space, let us find out the number of possible outcomes when one tosses a coin three times. So, starting at the first coin flip, we have one head and one tail. Then, on the second coin flip, we have head and tail. Then, from tail, we have one head and one tail. Then, on the third coin flip, we have again one head, one tail. Then, one head, one tail. Then, one head, one tail. And the last one, one head, one tail. So, if we list down all the possible outcomes, we can count the number of H, the heads, if that is our concern. Or pwede din naman, the number of tails, T, if that is our concern. So, therefore, S is equal to H, 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 T, H, T, H, T, H, 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 T, 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 H, T, 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 H, and T, T, T. From here, in our list, we can now count the number of heads, for example. So, we have 3, then 2, then 2, then 2, then 1, 1 H, 1 H, and the last is 0. So, the possible values of the random X are 0, 1, 2, and 3. If one is concerned only with the number of heads that fall, then a numerical value of 0, 1, 2, or 3 will be assigned to each sample point. The numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 are random quantities determined by the outcome of an experiment. They may be thought of uh, as the values assumed by some random variable x, which in this case represents the number of heads when a coin is tossed three times. So, uh, flipping a coin is an example of discrete variable. So, if you are asked to find the probability distribution 
of the sum of the numbers when a coin is tossed three times, here is the shortcut way. Since there are two cube equals eight points in the sample space representing equally likely outcomes. Two represents the head and the tail. Three, the exponent tells the number of times it is flip or toss. So we have two cube equals eight possible outcomes. So S is equal to HHH, that's one, HHT, that's two, HTH, that's three, THH, that's four, HTT, that's five, THT, that's six, and TTH, that's seven, and the last one, TTT, that's eight. So there are eight possible outcomes. So suppose it is tossed four times. So then we have two raised to the fourth power equals 16 possible outcomes. Next, another example. Two balls are drawn in succession without replacement from a box containing five red balls and green balls. The possible outcomes and the values y of the random variable y where y is the number of green balls. Let us visualize class. In a box, meron itong limang red balls and five green balls. So, kukuha daw tayo ng dalawang bola. Ang tanong is, ano-ano ang mga possible outcomes at ano-ano ang pwede natin makuha? So, we let y is the number of green balls. And let us uh, let s first be the sample space. So, we have sample space would be S equals GG, GR, RG, and RR. Of course, the possible outcomes would be 1 green and 1 green. Pwede magkasabay natin na makuha. Then, 1 green and 1 red. Or, 1 red, 1 green. Or, 1 red, and another one red ang pwede naman natin makuha so num the number of random variable y which is the green balls would be 0, 1, 2 so therefore we have y equals 0, 1, 2 ok let us proceed to our last example find the probability distribution of the sum of the numbers when a pair of dice is tossed. Here is the summary of the table of probability distribution. Let y be a random variable that has values of y which are the possible totals. So lahat ng values na nasa row ng y are the possible totals. Then on the second row, p of y Yung nasa numerator, it represents the number of ways partitioning possible outcomes over the total number of outcomes, which is the denominator. Suppose we have in the first die, 1. Uh, wait, die is the singular form of dice. When we say dice, we are referring to 2 die or 2 cubes. Kasi baka meron pang di nakakaalam. So again, in the first die, pwedeng possible na parehas na lumabas ay 1. Tapos yung isa, 1 din. So what is the sum of 1 and 1? 1 plus 1 equals 2. And there's only one possible outcome, which is 1, 1. So we have 1 over 36. Where did we get 36? The denominator. Because there are 6 numbers in one die and another 6 numbers in the second die, so we have 6 times 6 equals 36. So 36 is the total number of outcomes. Next, column 3. Where did we get that? We have 1, 2, 2, 1, and the sum is 3. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 
and 2 plus 1 equals 3. So, dalawa lang ang possible ways. So, we have 2 over 36. Nagigets na ba? Sige, isa pa. Sa next column, 4. Where did we get that? Lahat ng possible outcomes, whose sum is 4, ilanat yun. At ano-ano yun? We have 1, 3, 3, 1, and 2, 2. Ilan lahat yan? Tatlo. So, we have 3 over 36. Okay na ba? As isa pa. The next column, 5. How to explain this? If y is equal to 5, or if the sum is 5, what are the possible outcomes? So, we have 1, 4. What else? 4, 1. What else? 2, 3. And 3, 2. Oh, ilan na lahat yan? 4. So, ang um, probability in which the sum is 5 is equal to 4 over 36. So, and so on, and so on, and so forth. So, that's all guys. I hope you have learned something from this video. Be ready for our activity. But before doing our activity, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, TLC Math Made Easy. Thank you.